Hey guys, when I recently took a friend out for his first day ice climbing, I realized how complicated it can be to choose appropriate crampons and to adjust them for somebody new and not only. In this video, I want to share my knowledge and help whoever is trying to find the right crampon or achieve the right fit. I will also include a quick review for a few models that work for me and explain why I personally chose them over other options I tried over the years. A couple years ago, I had a personal story of nearly getting a heart attack when I bought new boots. They used to be new and didn't bother to fit my crampons till they failed to fit two days before I was leaving for Nepal. Talking about being a deer in the headlights living in California's Central Valley with no access to a decent climbing store. Turned out certain crampon models won't fit larger than average boots and one would need to purchase a longer center bar. It all worked out in Nepal, but live and learn. And more experienced climbers might be able to learn something from this video too, or at least add a comment with something I potentially got wrong or missed. After many years of climbing, I learn new tricks all the time. And if I can pass any wisdom to anyone learning, I'll start by saying be flexible to change your opinions and learning from people who are at times a lot less experienced than you are. First, let's start by recognizing crampons are traction devices attached to footwear to improve mobility on snow and ice during activities like hiking, mountaineering, ice climbing and dry tooling. If you do every imaginable type of climbing like me, you will own more pairs than you would want to admit to the public. That's after I sold a few. Aluminum strap-on crampons are typically flexible and I use them for summer hiking over icy passes, approaching summer alpine climbs and even for approach of certain spires in Patagonia, mainly in the Fitzroy Massif. They have a simple attachment system compatible with hiking boots or approach shoes. The more rigid your shoe is, the more secure you will feel on icy slopes. Obviously, these are not the shoes you would want. I'm talking about morning frozen snow icy, not climbing blue ice icy. To climb blue ice that's exposed or steeper than 25 degrees or so, you would want a steel crampon, or at least I would. At this point in my life, I am not as brave as I once was, and another pro tip from being a random guy on YouTube is to avoid being too brave. It will prevent injuries and promote longevity, which will help you gain more experience than someone taking a year off due to a severe injury. The steeper and more exposed the terrain gets, the more of an advanced crampon you will want. For my summer approach crampons, I personally use Gravel Airtex and Petzl Leopards in the last five years. Leopards are a lot lighter and their teeth appear to be sharper to me too. Gravels are more durable and have more of a crampon feel to them. However, I'm always looking to save weight and if I'm taking gear up a difficult route, I end up taking leopards along more often. What I don't like about them is how expensive they are and that if you end up using them for walking over short stretches of rock, they were out quite quickly because they are made out of aluminum. Then there are steel rigid crampons with horizontal or vertical front points. Horizontal are more appropriate for general mountaineering and basic easier ice climbing. Think top roping during your first season of learning how to ice climb. When you get into advanced mountaineering, ice climbing and dry tooling, you need specialized crampons compatible with boots with a stiff sole, such as these. I prefer ice climbing boots with a built-in gaiter, and I'd suggest you avoid buying them from the internet without trying them in real life first. Wear a thick sock when you are trying on different mountaineering boots, because unlike rock climbing shoes, they are not supposed to be tight because you are trying to avoid any restriction to circulation. But they are not meant to be a size too big either just enough room. For example, I wear a La Sportiva rock climbing shoe in size 43 and my La Sportiva boot as well as the current mountaineering Mammut boot are size 46 and a half. One important thing to mention about larger foot sizes and crampon fit is that unfortunately crampons are not universal and may require an extended 
connecting bar. When buying crampons, check if they will fit your boot, especially if you are larger than US size 11. Do it all crampons for general mountaineering can be strapped to summer hiking shoes as well as put on your ice climbing boots and be used for extreme top roping on ice. A good ice climber can lead in them too, probably harder than Water Ice 5, but to be real, someone leading Water Ice 5 will have a specialized crampon with vertical front points. Unless they want to be a true rebel, I would choose Irvis or Vasak Flex Lock depending on your shoe size and if you want two extra teeth. Smaller feet climbing Rainier, Shasta or something like Mountaineer's Route on Mount Whitney, I take Irvis Flex Lock over something like BD Serac Strap because Irvis appears to be about $50 cheaper, has sharper front points, and it's lighter too. So unless you have access to a BD Pro Deal, that's why I'd pick for general mountaineering. Black Diamond Contact Strap seems like their best option for general mountaineering that can also be strapped to your summer shoes. Which brings me to third type of crampons, made out of steel with one or two vertical front points. If you climb nothing but blue eyes, two vertical front points is a good mode to be in. However, if you also climb mixed or are dry tooling, you want crampons with a single vertical front point that fits your boots. Over the years, I experimented with an older Black Diamond Stinger model. Then I didn't like how toy-like they felt and switched to Gravel G20s. The new version of Black Diamond Stingers looks sweet, by the way. If I wasn't already invested in what I have, I would consider them, but they don't have as much flexibility as darts or links. And from what I understand, you can't modify them into a dual point crampon. I like flexibility. Anyway, Gravel G20s were great for sexy mix climbing or dry tooling at a crag, as well as steep ice climbing. However, when I took them to Alaska and climbed Mount Hunter's Bibler Cluing to third ice band, and completed the Denali Diamond on the south face of Mount Denali, including summiting Denali three times on that trip, I learned that yes, crampons are very good on difficult mix pitches and for climbing ice, but traversing 40 to 50 degrees snow and ice slopes, I felt very insecure. For my future expeditions, I used Petzl darts and links and have been very happy. After years of trial and error, I am now fully in the Petzl family of crampons and ice tools. What I like the most is how interchangeable things are and that pretty much every part that you may want can be ordered separately or replaced without having to buy a brand new crampon. As a disclaimer, I bought all this gear with my own money and Petzl is not paying me to give a better review than I would otherwise. The two best crampon models for me in their lineup currently are Lynx and Darts both have their own advantages. Main advantage for both is that you can modify the front points to be either mono or dual points on the same day if you want to. They provide you with an extra front point and this Allen wrench which makes things very easy. Main advantage for both is that you can modify the front points to be either mono or dual points on the same day if you want to. If you go on a trip and want to climb on dual points when you ascend a long ice route, you can and change them to a mono point for the next day when you're going for a mixed or a dry tooling objective. You have that flexibility. I personally just leave mine in a mono point mode no matter what at this point. Petzl's Lynx model has an extra set of teeth compared to the dart model, which probably help on moderate snow slopes, but I currently replace mine with darts because I can use a lighter heel and save weight on something truly light and fast, though I'm probably just being a gear whore. One example of somebody actually using these, from what I remember, is Colin Haley on the record shattering ascent of Cassin Ridge, which he did in about eight hours, according to my constantly fading memory, which is incredibly fast. I think going for a fast lap up the Cassin at some point would be very cool, and that's partly why I bought these. In any case, in this setup, a lot can go wrong, 
and I wouldn't suggest anyone using it on the regular. If you do, check the cord after every episode of Fuse. If you ever ran on gators, you probably know the cord doesn't usually last longer than a few months if you are doing a bunch of boulder hopping. Losing a crampon in the middle of a big mountain route could be tragic and probably won't be worth 30 grams. So I'd say if you are 99% of ice climbers out there that might want to dabble in mixed climbing but also climb mountains, steep or not very, you can buy the links and do it all. But if you do a lot of general mountaineering and ice climbing, I would get two sets of crampons, one for general mountaineering and one for ice and mix. Petzl darts and links are very expensive and I would avoid beating them up unless you have a gear sponsor, in which case you are probably not listening to me, unless you are going up Mount Everest next spring, in which case it's likely you've never used crampons and you are in the right place. But sorry, I digress. In addition to choosing a model based on what you are generally want to climb, there is also the fit and modifying them appropriately. One of the things I like about links and darts is that you can choose the length of your front point. It's important to understand why someone would want a longer or a shorter front point. Imagine you are ice climbing. It is nice to kick out steps and have more stable perches with the teeth that are on the side. However, if you are dry tooling or climbing mixed, you want that point to be a bit longer so that the side teeth don't interfere with the rock that may be around the hold you're trying to step on. To understand what I'm talking about, you have to do some dry tooling. It becomes obvious very quickly when other teeth get in the way. In general, with ice and mixed climbing especially, you will want an automatic crampon that has precise fit to your crampon compatible boots in order to avoid any unwanted shifting. However, I was able to achieve a very good fit with semi-automatic crampons also. When fitting the crampons, such as darts, you should probably set the front bail to the hole in the middle, then adjust the back and then pick the appropriate length and direction of the middle section. Make sure your front point is facing forward with a slight lean towards the center of your body, but just a slight lean. Adjust your front tooth appropriately. Make sure that when you strap your crampons onto your boots, there is a tight seal and no movement at all. The fit, in my opinion, is even more important than using the right kind of crampon. You can climb ice in horizontal or with vertical front points, but you can't do either if your crampons are unstable. There is no shame in asking someone experienced if things look right. I would advise you to adjust your crampons at home in warmth so you don't have to do it in bulky gloves, cold fingers and snow everywhere. And when you do get to the ice crag and strap them on, test the fit and make sure snow didn't get in the way before you start climbing. On ice climbing and mountaineering boots, the frontal strap is there only to keep the crampon from falling off your foot completely, not to hold them in place. However, when it comes to summer strap-on crampons, the front strap plays a bigger role and it is important to not only make sure that the crampon fits correctly, but the strap is tightly on. After I buy and fit a new pair of crampons to my climbing boots, I usually cut the frontal strap a little shorter so that I don't have to wrap it around my shoe and look like a total goober. Oh my god. Why did God create man? You're eating beets only. And I would advise you to do the same. And just in case you wondered what is this, this is a specific boot for dry tooling which is used for steep routes where you have to use your hands as your footholds almost. It's called figure four or figure nine. Since this video is made mainly for beginners or people who might be new to ice climbing, I would love to ask you to avoid cutting in front of other people when you go ice climbing on multi-pitch routes. It is completely unsafe and many people have been hurt due to falling ice from climbers above. 
I would advise to not climb below other people at all. I understand we all love ice climbing and have a limited amount of time to go outdoors, but we have to take care of each other and try to stay safe ourselves so that we can do this activity longer and not ruin anyone else's day. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments so that I could answer them or at least attempt to in the future videos. Hope this was helpful and you click the like button as a way of saying thank you for my hard work. Subscribe to the channel, I will try to post more training oriented content in the future, but because it's the ice climbing season, I wanted to share more about ice climbing since it's appropriate right now. Included in the description are affiliate links for your convenience of research. Every piece of gear reviewed was bought with my own money and no one is sponsoring this video or has any influence on my opinions. Wish everyone a safe season of ice climbing. Make sure to do it with good friends and have a great rest of your day.